damn barrels! What are you looking for? A couple of marshmallows to- for the past couple of weeks, I've been spending my time in VR, wandering through time and enjoying Odd Boy and M Theory's new title, Wanderer. As my earlier pun might have suggested, we find ourselves in the future, and it isn't looking very bright. For reasons yet unknown to us, something has gone horribly wrong, and the world has experienced a massive climate disaster, which has flooded most of the world. After a short look around the flooded streets of Boston, a friendly chat with the local doomsday cult, and a close encounter with some crocodiles, we eventually end up at our grandfather's secret hideout. After spending some more time getting the place up and running and befriending a talking watch called Samuel, we then start our adventure proper by hopping back and forth between the moon, ancient civilizations, and other historic events trying to prevent this whole mess from ever happening in the first place. Along the way, you will encounter historic figures such as Nikola Tesla, get hunted by evil time cops, and spend time collecting various artifacts that either unlock new time jumps or help you solve some of the various problems you encounter along the way. One thing that immediately stands out is just how amazing this thing looks. From the moment you open up the main menu to when you first start learning the basics on how to interact with things in the lab, you quickly notice that the texture quality on items is absolutely through the roof. The game looks so good in fact that it easily matches up with the likes of Lone Echo and Half-Life Alex when it comes to graphical quality. The latter one still outshines Wonder in several key areas, but more on that later. One thing that genuinely impressed me is the sheer variety in environments this game has to offer. From start to finish, each separate area is as believable as the next, and the level of detail that you can find even in the one-off set pieces such as the moon is absolutely stunning. The various items that you find scattered around the environment could all come in handy at some point in order to help you get past certain obstacles. But exactly how they are supposed to do that can be anyone's guess. A good example is early on in the game when you find a dusted up picture frame that might be holding some information that you need in order to proceed. The straightforward approach is to try and clean off the gunk that is obscuring the details, but the items that are needed are pretty specific. My first attempt was trying to rub it off, which did absolutely nothing. After looking around a bit more, I found some cleaning fluid, which I thought I could combine with this toilet brush I found earlier to do the job, but sadly that wasn't the right solution either. I had to go back to where I found the cleaning fluid in the first place and use the specific brush that could be found near it in order to finally make it work. There were a few other instances where I had a similarly frustrating experience as well. That being said though, most of the puzzles worked exactly like you would expect them to, and even though some of them might take a little while to figure out, the genuine feel of satisfaction that you get when you finally do is totally worth it. Speaking of things being worth it, at several points during your playthrough, you're gonna find some era-specific artifacts. Now while these artifacts look pretty cool on their own, the electrical sparks and vibrations that come off of them when you pick them up immediately clue you into the fact that these things are pretty important. During the game, you will be feeding these into your watch Samuel in order to hop around to different moments in time. And the simple act of doing so is pretty breathtaking in and of itself, when you realize just how smoothly these transitions take place. And that's probably a good thing too, since from the moment that you unlock this ability, you will be jumping around a lot in order to solve the puzzles you encounter along the way. The ones that you do encounter all tend to focus on some VR-centric interaction mechanic with an increasing level of difficulty and complexity, from assembling a fishing rod to collect items to controlling an RC cart using a remote control. All of these are pretty cleverly implemented, and none of them really overstay their welcome. One thing that's important to keep in mind though is that all of these time periods are persistent worlds. So whenever you happen to leave an item behind you when you hop through time, it will remain there until you retrieve it, which at first glance is pretty impressive, but can also cause a lot of headaches when you can't remember exactly where you left that screwdriver in a time of need. A simple way around this though is taking as many items with you back to the apartment whenever you get the chance. Another way to help mitigate it is by being on the lookout for these tiny little glowing crystals, since if you collect enough of them, you can use them to expand your inventory, which is located inside of your watch. The system is pretty well implemented, but unfortunately you only start with a single inventory slot, which is pretty much pointless early on. So being on the lookout for these is pretty much a must. One final thing of note is the locomotion options. I commend the developers on implementing a wide variety of comfort options that you can fine tune to suit your needs. Adjustments to movement and turning types as well as intensity are all there, and since the release a seated mode has also been patched in. 
The only thing that I found a bit jarring though is the jumping interactions when you use smooth locomotion. Judging by some of the earlier sections, it's clear that the levels were initially designed with teleportation in mind, and while this doesn't have to pose a problem, when you need to hold down a dedicated jump button for a preset amount of time in order to engage a jump teleport, it can get a little bothersome when all you really want to do is just drop down a few minuscule ledges. Letting players simply walk off of these to drop down when using smooth locomotion, or taking a page out of the Half-Life Alex playbook and combining the locomotion options by letting players teleport jump when pressing down the joystick would go a long way in improving the game feel when exploring. Likewise, there are a few other nitpicks that I have about the game that are not really deal breakers, but are clear signs that this game could probably have benefited from a little bit of extra playtesting and polish. There's a couple of instances in the game where you have to turn some dials to a specific position in order to progress. And while it's definitely possible to do that, your hand tends to get a little finicky when it comes to rotational movements. The same type of jank is experienced when you're trying to grab onto an object when there are a few of them cluttered in front of you. The game highlights multiple items to indicate where your interaction target is, but when you perform your grab interaction, there's no telling which item will end up in your hand, and sometimes it's even an item located totally outside of your vision. What's more is that this can also lead to you grabbing onto items like door handles which should be totally out of your range, and seeing your hand float off somewhere in the distance is a pretty uncomforting experience. All in all, Wonder is a technical marvel that offers up dense, highly detailed worlds that you can seamlessly jump between, with deep interactive puzzles embedded into each, which are often finely tuned for VR and are well paced to minimize frustration. The game's ambitious scope manages to pull off genuine moments of awe, which elevate it from a simple escape room simulator to a full-blown VR adventure. Unfortunately, Wanderer stumbles in a few important areas such as hand-reaching interactions, locomotion, and some inconsistent physics which, while not game-breaking, are hopefully further refined in an upcoming patch. That being said, the 10 plus hours that it took me to complete the game were filled with genuine excitement that I hadn't really felt in a while, and the experience is one that I can highly recommend to anyone looking for a good narrative-driven game. That's all for now, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.